how about 10xing the capacity of your portable power station with some of these. That's right, these server rack batteries could be some of the best bang for the buck battery expansion solutions for your portable power stations. I'm currently testing these two brand new server rack batteries from WattCycle. They've got all the communications that you'd need, huge, beautiful screens, app control, and some form of UL certification. I need you guys to weigh in on that aspect. Currently, I've got them hooked up uh, with my Tower of Power. We're gonna be using this 12,000 XP to test them. Stay tuned, because I got a bunch of cool information coming your way. I've got the EcoFlow Delta II power station here, and uh, there's a little hack that uh, you can do that uh, allows you to connect additional 48 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries, which matches the battery voltage and chemistry in this power station to its extra battery port and expand its capacity in a massive way. If you get two of these watt cycle server rack batteries like I've got right here, that's going to be equivalent to having 10 of these portable power stations, plus then the capacity of that power station on top of it. Isn't that insane? So because these plug into that extra battery terminal there, this power station will discharge these batteries as well as charge them up at the same time. I have a whole in-depth video on how to configure this with EcoFlow power stations. I also have a video about how to do it with a Blue Eddy power station. And I've got even more power stations I'm working on hacking to do similar things as we speak. So subscribe so you don't miss that. So guys, check out how totally epic this is. We've got an electric space heater plugged into the Delta II here, pulling 1425 watts. But if we come over here to these batteries, hopefully you'll be able to see, but uh, we've got 13 amps coming out of this uh, top battery. And out of this bottom battery here, we've got 14.2 amps coming out of it. So the vast majority of the power that's going to that space heater is actually discharging from these batteries. So let me sell this to you from a pure cost perspective. The server rack batteries are a no brainer. So currently at the time making this video, this is the extra battery for the EcoFlow Delta II. One generation old, actually, there's a new generation out. So the price has actually come down recently. And if you check it out, it's selling for 369. Okay, by contrast, these server rack batteries currently are on sale for $699.99 prior to any discount codes or whatnot. So we just go 369 times two. The subtotal here comes to 738. So you would spend more money buying two expansion batteries for this particular power station than you would buying a single one of these server rack batteries. Each of the expansion batteries for this unit is just one kilowatt hour. Each of these server rack batteries is basically five kilowatt hours, as you can see there on the top. So you get more than double the power capacity in one of these server rack batteries than you would with two of the expansion batteries for this power station. And these things are so compact, it's insane. Check this out. So if we just kind of do a eyeball comparison down here at this perspective, you can see that this power station and these batteries stacked on top of each other are nearly the same height. And then of course the batteries are a little wider and deeper than the power station, but not by much. You know, if you took two of those side by side, you'd be about the same width as one of these server rack batteries and they're just ever so slightly deeper front to back than you know the handles on that uh, power station. So you can pack way more energy into a smaller footprint using these as opposed to the expansion batteries for this. Let's unbox these server rack batteries from WattCycle. First, we've got some documentation here. Got some uh, mounting brackets, it appears. Nice communication cable. Two negative, two positive terminal caps two folding handles, uh, some terminal screws, and some additional hardware. We have a ground wire here, and two short battery cables. And the writing on these particular cables uh, is covered up, so I can't see exactly what gauge wire this is. But to hear my tower of power, that's two gauge right there. And uh, you can see this is a bit, quite a bit smaller. So I would guess maybe this is uh, four gauge maybe. If I were to guess, it seems a little bigger than uh, six gauge, that's for sure. And here's the battery, you guys. We've obviously got our negative terminals over here and our positive terminals over here. It does look like there's plenty of room from the top surface here to these screws that are sticking out. So uh, I know some uh, 
Previous batteries have had issues with things shorting out to these screws in similar configurations, but uh, this has a little higher standoff to the terminal way up here. So it'll probably be less of an issue on these. Got our communication uh, ports right here. Nice big breaker right here. Let's flip it to the on position and uh, let's turn this on and see what happens. Wow. That is a deluxe screen. One of the best screens size-wise and brightness-wise I've ever seen on a battery period, let alone a server rack battery. Look how cool this is. We've got our state of charge indicator, voltages, temperatures, all kinds of stuff up here in the top. Uh, it looks like we can change the addressing on the pack. We're gonna be testing that because we've got two of these batteries. I specifically requested two because I wanted to see uh, how easy it was to set up the communication protocol between the two. And check this out, guys. Active balancing right here. Equalizing switch is what they call it. We can turn it off and on. That is very nice because some people don't want the active balancer at all. It comes with one, but uh, this is the first battery I've ever seen that has software control to enable or disable it, which is sweet. Let's go to cells. Oh yeah, look at that. You got uh, all the individual cell information. Of course, this just has uh, 16 cells. So uh, we're not gonna go all the way up to 24. And check that out, you've got six temperature sensors as well, and you access that by pushing this temperature button. The little battery button changes it to voltage. Come down here to alarm, and uh, this will tell you your alarms and status of things. Go to chart. So you have to see this, but it looks like it charts uh, maybe the state of charge, different spikes, and different things like that. Over the course of time, uh, click the set button here. So we can set our CAN protocol, and then we can come over here, and we can scroll through and find different protocols. I mean, there's a lot here. Let, we'll just start from the bottom. SAJ, TBB, GrowWatt, INVT, SMA, Studer, PV, 1800F, Solax, Sofar, Sorotech, Ginlong, A401, Goodwee, Victron, and PY slash MEG slash DEY. I'm guessing that's like Pylon Tech. And then we can come down here and configure RS4485. And we've got uh, PY slash GOS, POW, Gurwatt, Voltronic, Pace, AGV, uh, Tent Tech 01. Come down here to uh, LCD. Uh, we get to configure the language. And last but not least, a product right here. Oh, that's cool. So it just kind of gives you your uh, information about the battery itself. So I am so impressed and in love with this screen. I can't wait to see it in action here. The standard charge discharge rate is 50 amps continuous, uh, going up to 100 amps for max. And we should have overcurrent protection uh, that kicks in at 110 amps plus or minus 10 amps. Something that's a little bit uh, unique is charging low temperature protection 23 to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if that means that it's got to hit 23 degrees before it shuts off, which in my personal opinion is too low because that is like, what? nine degrees below freezing. And notice all of the different certifications here, including UL. However, that's listed under the cell certifications. So that might mean that the pack itself, where we have battery pack certifications, is not UL listed. Some smart person down in the comments uh, let us know what this means and uh, if you think this would pass inspection or not. Okay, let's just uh, mount these handles here. The short side with these elongated holes are gonna go on the top and this hole and this hole down here is what the handle connects to. And if you look right here, the two holes on the other side of the bracket line up perfectly to work with this screw. So I probably have to take that screw out and put it back in as well as a new hole right there. Okay, we've got uh, the two handles on. And then also be sure and have your head screwed on to make sure that the handle, the handle only folds one direction. So make sure it folds the direction you want it. In my case, I wanted it going to the inside. That way it didn't stick out beyond the side of these little ears. All right, let's do a battery capacity test on these WattCycle server rack batteries. You can see they are both at a 100% state of charge. I've got the Victron Smart Shunt right here. That's what's gonna be monitoring and metering that. And you can see I've zeroed everything out. All right, results of the capacity test. Test. You can see we're at 0% state of charge on that battery, 0% state of charge on that one. They're both hovering between 45 and 46 volts, so not dead dead, but the battery just did shut off. And the results uh, here are 196 amp hours out of 200. So certainly within the margin of error, I'm going to run capacity test just one more time 
just for fun and see what uh, results we have at that point. Okay, the second battery discharge test, uh, capacity test finished. And I wish I had the camera rolling because I had my Victron Smart Shunt open. I was monitoring it as it was running and it was just about to 200. It was 198.7 amp hours and the packs shut down and killed power to the shunt, which is normal. But for some reason, uh, maybe because I was mon actively monitoring that, it did not record anything in the history on that shunt. But like I said, it was almost 199. It might have turned over to that uh, before the power turned off within the margin of error for full capacity on both of these batteries together. But let's just take a quick look at their app. We've got a percentage of battery remaining. Right now I'm charging, so it's giving us an estimated time to fully charge. Then here we've got a temperature gauge. We can toggle charging and discharging off and on here. You can rename the battery right up here. You can see the battery voltage and if you tap on that, that will give you a little more in-depth view of what the voltage is doing. Then we've got our amperage and our watts. And that's all on this page. It all fits here. You don't even scroll or anything. It's pretty sweet. And if you just come down here to this bottom about tab, there's a secret setting menu right here. And WattCycle is super legit because they allow you to modify certain parameters on their BMS. And if you don't know what you're doing, don't mess with them. Just leave the defaults and the defaults are pretty good. The main one I wanted to look at is remember how in the manual it was saying something about being set to below freezing. Well, we can see right here the actual programming is 32 degrees. Let's test internal communications with these batteries. So now let's go ahead and uh, power the BMS uh, units down. Just takes them a few seconds. They'll go off. I've got uh, this cable right here. And if you take a look uh, on the communication ports, we have a link in and a link out, okay? So we need to go from the link out port right here to the link in port on the other battery. So we'll just go ahead and connect this up like that, easy. Now we'll go ahead and boot up the BMSs again. So now if you take note up here at the top, we've got this pack addressed as pack number one. And if you take a look uh, at this screen right here, you can see how the pack address is set to number two, and that can be changed right here with those toggle buttons. I got the 12,000 XP here, and the conduit box is right down here, and you can see I've just uh, patched into the communication cable that's normally going into this wall mount battery. Uh, I've just extended it over, and uh, here's the end of that cable, and we're simply going to come and plug that into the CAN bus port like that. And then right now, I'm just running off of voltage, so I'm gonna come into the menu, and we're going to change it to a lithium battery. And then down here, it's gonna ask us what type. We're gonna come here and we're gonna select the pylon protocol. Come back here, we can see that we've got a 100% state of charge on the battery. And here on the monitoring app, it is detecting the voltage and the state of charge. It says it's 100% state of charge. And then if we scroll down here, you can see that it's detecting two batteries in parallel with a total battery capacity of 200 amp hours. So you have closed loop communication easy between those server rack batteries from WattCycle and the EG4 12,000 XP or any other EG4 inverter. Let's do heavy load testing on one of these batteries. Two 48 volt battery chargers. Those are currently running right now at 2,200 plus watts, 43 amps. Let's go ahead and turn our heat gun on and let's go ahead and turn the heater on. See what we got. 90, 115, 113, 121 amps, 119, 115, 5,000 watts. Oh, we're getting a warning here. Discharge over current alarm, it says. So it probably won't let us run over 100 amps continuously very long here. So can this produce 100 amps of current? Absolutely. Does it recognize when it goes over? Absolutely. Let's take a look inside this server rack battery. I'm liking what I'm seeing already, but check out the huge size of BMS this has. That's awesome to see. And they've done a really nice job of keeping the cables all tidy and nice. And probably my favorite feature, look, they are using bus bars to connect the main negative here from the pack to the BMS. And you can see that, that comes off and comes through here and comes up to the main terminal. And then you can also see that on the main positive here, we've got a similar bus bar setup. Even this little cable down here is nicely zip tied. All right, ready for the big reveal here? Ooh, look at that, you guys. Okay, the thing that jumped out at me most is, check this out, we got all these balance cables coming in here and they're all nicely protected 
and incredibly managed. And check this out. At every point where the balance leads need to come, they've tucked them underneath these metal lips right here. So the, the cables are basically out of sight completely. And they've gone ham with zip tie, zip tie, zip tie, zip tie, zip tie, zip tie, zip tie. I mean, every possible location they've zip tied those cables. You can see them all along here. So I say Watt Cycle gets big points for cable management. This is insane. We've got uh, welded on bus bars with little relief hump there in the middle, which is good to see. Then we've got a temperature sensor right here, another one right here, a third one right here, and a fourth one down here. It looks like you might be able to get a QR code scan there. I don't have that app, but uh, maybe if I can get this set to focus in enough, maybe you guys can uh, figure out which uh, particular cells these are. And then notice we've got uh, metal compression here, or same thing down here. And then this big, huge plate across the front here, that the BMS is mounted on, is also compressing back on the cells. So the cells are very nicely compressed in this case. So I think Watt Cycle has really knocked this out of the park. And this has a very premium build to it with a very acceptable price. Do you guys agree with me? Let me know down in the comments. So yeah, guys, be sure and check out uh, the links down in the description to other videos about how to hack portable power stations like this. I think you'll really enjoy them. So tell me in the comments, guys. Do you see this being a viable solution? What do you guys think of these Watt Cycle Server Rack batteries? I think you're getting incredible bang for your buck, especially right now with the sale that's going on. So be sure and check out the links that I've got down in the description. I'll list any coupon codes that I have there as well. You can also scan the QR code on the screen if you're watching on TV and that will take you to the full list of all the links that are down in the description. I've also got links to where you guys can submit uh, direct Q&A to me, as well as book one-on-one -on -one video consultations. So be sure and uh, take advantage of those opportunities. I'm thrilled with these. They are going to happily contribute to my ever-growing Tower of Power over here. And you'll want to be subscribed because as part of the addition with this and a few more batteries I've got, I'm going to be taking a deep dive on how I've got this whole Tower of Power configured. A lot of you have expressed interest in that, and that video is coming up soon. So be sure and stay tuned and be subscribed for that. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hype. The five free things that support free content. I'll make a deal with you. I'll keep making free content for you to enjoy. If you'll make an extra effort to do those five free things to help get my content in front of more eyeballs. For some reason, YouTube must have those five free things done in order to push the video out to more people. So if you do that, I'd really, really appreciate it. Stay safe, and we'll catch you all next time.